Let's jump over to our man Teddy Kegstad as we do every Wednesday at 40 past the hour from forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So last Wednesday, Teddy, I was talking to you. You were on your beautiful balcony with the foliage. Uh, and this week, I'm on the balcony, man, talking to you for some beautiful backgrounds. But quite a <laughs> right? difference in the markets, man. So, uh, we have a lot to digest in terms of Friday, the action, of mm -hmm. course, and then this week and yesterday's action with Chairman Powell. Where do you want to kick things off? Well, what a difference a week makes, huh? You know, um, well, why don't, we, why don't we start with the end? So, okay. And, uh, we can tie it all together. So when we spoke last week on on Wednesday, I was telling all your viewers, stay away from holiday markets. Probably good advice for most people after what happened. <laughs> so, Remarkable, um, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, well, now it's kind of interesting. You know, Thursday was the holiday, obviously, and then the, uh, Thursday night into Friday was where everything happened. So let's digest what really happened. Now, obviously, they were hot, thin holiday markets, okay? We had a huge move in the interest rate market. Obviously, we had a $10 sell-off in oil. So what did that do? It knocked around, well, for one, the interest rate move impacts the dollar to begin with. Then the oil move also shook up all the, you know, remember we had the oil trade on for like the yen, the Canada, and certain uh, uh, different currency crosses. All of those were impacted huge. I mean, you can tell by the chart, the yen, I mean, it was kind of funny because Thursday night I had a short-term sell signal and we were right below my 116 target you know so i'm thinking well you know what it's a holiday i'm just going to liquidate my launch and just put a couple shorts on and just risk the high i'm like it's a low risk sell and we're right below my target right wake up the next day catch a three dollar move whoa what, what was that all about you know <laughs> so and uh so th these moves don't happen you know typically yeah. unless there's like news you know this was a holiday exacerbated move on a thin market short hours in the u.s and what have you going into a weekend now, obviously, Monday, Tuesday was the digestion period where we're at right now. You know, now oil, you know, it's the it's the COVID scare. That's what's going on right now. You know, so we haven't had, you know, when, if we start to see lockdowns in the U.S., obviously, and keep on pushing around the world. I mean, Germany and Austria are not looking good right now. You know, yes. so that's where we, we are definitely having the COVID trade back on the table. But I would be leery of this oil sell-off. Now, I know I've been a bull calling for $100, you know, and it's not about right or wrong here. It's about what's the reality of things. Um, unless we're going to have a slowdown in pace with everything, especially globally, oil is just taking a nick. This is, this is a knee-jerk reaction to fear, you know. So kind of like what would happen after months of what was going on during the COVID uh, trend when we, were, when we were trading lower and stuff like that. Um, the fact is that supplies of oil are not – Oil is not running out. Oil is just not getting to where it needs to go. So the question of demand is there, you know. So I think that's what you're really seeing with the yen, you know, especially for as far as most of the currencies. And let's start with that one. So nice. we had a nice correction, okay. We're coming off of multi-month highs. <laughs> you know, a, a two, three-day sell-off is not a bear market make, you know. And especially with the, with the extent of the range that happened over Friday and even the volatility on Monday and Tuesday. You know, so at these levels, here's what I'm looking at. You know, you look at the dollar index, okay? That peaked, obviously, last week going into the holiday. It's coming off a high, you know? So I'm looking at all of these moves right now as a correction, not as a trend changer or anything like that, because what's changed in the world? Nothing, you know, except for the fear factor, you know? So I think that's what we're, we're trading on right now. Um, I'm still bullish the, the U.S. dollar yen overall. I think now is a good buying area long term. I mean, unless oil continues to get a slide, but I don't really see oil getting below 60 bucks a barrel, let alone into the 50s anytime soon. You know, and even if it does, I, I think that'll be an, an exacerbated spike and you'll have a balloon underwater rally. So I'd be very careful getting caught with these what I'm saying are corrections right now. I think your counter trend trades, you have to view it as that and, and, and manage it like that as well. Yeah, I love the take, man. And even on, on, on crude, which is remarkable, I was just playing with some Fibonacci numbers, uh, Teddy. And if you take the mm -hmm. run, it's a remarkable run. And not even going from the COVID lows, you know, where it was down at six bucks or negative uh, prices. After you consolidated, when you take the price where you go from basically the breakout of the markets in November of 2020, you pull up a 382, mm -hmm. folks, of that entire run, okay? And that run starts at $35, basically, or even lower, 33.64, I have on my chart, mm -hmm. up to 84. We 
we've just touched, Teddy, a 3A2 retracement, which is a pretty mm-hmm. standard retracement um, on that pullback that we had from 84 bucks, and it's a quick pullback. Right. Uh, I agree, back to 68. But it's important for that context. Sometimes I'm not. I don't mm-hmm. know if you heard the start of the program. I'm kind of trying to bring listeners into the same thing when you mm-hmm. hear pundits like Kramer saying, you know, it's too late to sell, no matter what you're talking about. And I'm saying, <laughs> folks, you got to look at a long-term chart here and see where we've right. come, see where we've gone. Uh, mm-hmm. You can't. I wouldn't allow even a sentiment like that to come in my head, Teddy, right? Like, I'm not selling I at times, you, but, but you start thinking it's too late to sell when you almost, you have the biggest company in the world at all time highs, Apple, remarkable right. resilience. You have the S&Ps within 2 or 3%. You know, I don't know the exact number. It's 2 or 3%, mm-hmm. you know, basically as we chop around here. That's one day's move, Teddy, you know, on, right. on the market action. So right. in, in the crude sentiment, I kind of agree that, listen, if you don't think a 38% retracement is capable when we were at negative prices up to over $80 a barrel, basically, <laughs> yeah. of course, a, a pullback. Uh, it's important, folks. Uh, sure. Okay, so good take on the end. Where, what other currencies are you looking at this week, Teddy, with everything else that's kind of in play? Uh, I would I would definitely watch out for the pound. You know, that like we saw it. We had, I had a buy signal in the euro a couple of days ago, so that's that's why I think this is a correction. When you, when you look at the dollar index, the major currencies are the euro and the pound. The euro obviously has set a short-term bottom. It has is trying to have a nice little correction. The pound is bobbling off the lows. Like it looks like it wants the bottom, but it also looks like it wants to slam the lows again. You know, now I am short-term bullish the pound. You know, um, not very bullish, but I can see a nice little correction over the next. I think the dollar is going to be under pressure for the next week or so. You know, unless we have a big turnaround in oil and a big sell-off in rates. Now, you mentioned Powell. We heard something out of his mouth now as over the past couple of days that we haven't heard yet. Inflation is here to stay. That's huge. You know, by, by the Fed yeah. taking that stance, that means now they're going to do or lean towards, which I think is always the wrong thing in an inflationary environment, is to raise interest rates. Of course, you can't cut rates because there's nowhere you can go anymore, you know. Yeah. So um, and I think you have to watch the bonds like the, the activity we've had in the Forex market. You had a three. This is where I, where especially going into Thursday, you know, after we spoke on Wednesday, you had a three dollar move in the 30 year Treasury bonds on a holiday market off of no news, <laughs> a rally. OK, so that's where you've that right there gives you weakness in the dollar that set us up for weakness. Then you had the sell off of ten dollars in the oil market on a Friday holiday market. See, when you yeah. combine that level of of market action in those two variables, which the interest rate trade is always on the t- on the on the table for the like, Forex markets. The oil trade, we know we've been talking about. It's been back on for a couple months. It's there. So when you have that level of movement, you know what I'm saying? It's sure to shake up the other ones. So now, if, as long as, and like I'm saying, as long as in the short run, oil stabilizes kind of where it's at, you don't see an interest rate move, then I think you're going to see a bounce in the pound. To get a rally in the pound is very likely. Um, to see a continuation in the euro, very likely, but not very extended. Um, the U.S. dollar Swiss is the one where I think you're going to get hey, the most. Teddy, hang reaction. with us for one second, all sure. right? Because we're going to break. Okay. We'll be right sure, back. We'll be right back, folks. Okay. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up 48 points right now. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. And, Teddy, I just didn't want you to have to rush through that because I like the way you were working through each one towards the end there, just talking about whether it was, you know, the crude, the pullback, the the Forex markets, how they were reacting. If you could just continue with what you were saying there. Well, so the Swiss, like the yen, was, was one that got batted down pretty hard. Um, I think it's an overdone break, but I still think it's it's prodding the lows right now. And And, like, we have the oil numbers coming out today. Oil's up a little bit right now on the day. That's what's really dictating these trades. As far as, like I said, I think it's a correction. So I think you're going to still see the U.S. dollar Swiss tread on support for the next couple of sessions or so. Um, and then we get to, we already spoke about the yen. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, those are two that are just in the gutter. I would be very careful with any bounce in those markets, period, right now, especially with the yes. lockdowns um, in Australia. Um, yeah. The U.S. dollar, Canada, that's a touchy trade. I it's it's been pressuring resistance right now and and i think a lot of that has to do with with the with the current trend of what happened over the past couple sessions you know i'd be very cautious buying the u.s dollar canada right now that's a very touchy one it's in the middle of an area where long term it's a bear still it's in an upside correction and there's just too many variables there it's hard to lock in a trend on that one but the thing i think you really need to key off of is that 
right now all these markets are in a short-term correction or at least you should view it as a short-term correction and not a trend change never try and pick a top okay that's important and especially with the way the bonds and the oil market have moved these markets over the past week if you start to see a big sell-off the 30-year and the 10-year bond and if you see oil get another five six dollars higher back up into the 70 mid 70s or something like that we're back on the regular trade where we were a week and a half ago, meaning that the dollar bulls will come raging back. So, and markets go, tend to go out like they come in. So you've had an aggressive sell-off in the U.S. dollar yen, an aggressive sell-off in the U.S. dollar Swiss. Don't think that if those other markets turn, that we're not going to see the yen back up at 115. I mean, you don't I have a three dollar sell-off in, in in the yen on a holiday. You know, it's no, it, I love the way you walk it through it, man. Understanding how the commodities are driving the currencies are driving the action. Well, Teddy, we appreciate the update, man. We we'll look forward to talking to you next Thanks. week. All okay, right. Have a great have one, man. Me too.